Andre, how's it going? Hey, man, it's Sunday. It's week one. Every man in America is sitting on their ass right now. Let's go, man. Yo, it's in full swing. Obviously, we already got, you know, Browns, Bengals, duking it out in the rain. I mean, how are you feeling about this first week of football so far? Hey, man, it's a lot going on. You got Sam Howell stinking it up. You know, Bryce Young first game. This is a close one. It's 10-10 right now in the third quarter. It's a lot of stuff going on right now, man. You know, San Fran wiping the floor with the with the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's going to be a long season for you Steelers fans. Long, long season. So I, I love what I'm seeing right now. I can't wait till the Eagles get on at 4 o'clock. I can't wait for that. You know, I'm about to step out in a little bit. Me and my uh, video editor, we're going to go to a sport bar. We're going to get the fans riled up. Ramped up. I can't wait for that. And uh, yeah, man, it's it's going down. We 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 ready for another Super Bowl entrance by the Philadelphia Eagles this year, man. Hey, fly Eagles, fly, go Bird Gang. Because I mean, this team is stacked. You and I have already talked about all the roster depth and flexibility that they have, particularly starting with the uh, defensive and offensive lines. But before we get there, let's just wind it on back to yesterday. Colorado, go Buffs. 2-0 and now, Shadur Sanders, over the course of two games, this guy has thrown for almost 1,000 yards. So, first question, first question of two questions, is Shadur Sanders your or the Heisman front runner right now? He, he got to be the it, – it's, it's between him and Caleb Williams. It, look, Caleb Williams is finishing games with over 300 yards and not even playing the second half. So, so he's, in, he's the top dog. But the way Shador playing, man, he might be able to unseat Caleb from the Heisman Trophy. Like, like, look, you, you already went in a hostile territory. TCU, go get a victory against a ranked opponent. Now you're coming in with a target on your back. 22 ranked, number 22 ranked team in the nation. You got a Nebraska team. You got uh, Matt Rule talking shit, you know, talking about Dion and, you know, the lead up to the game. You got Shador showing the rolly, showing the rolly off to him. That's that's a big flex right there. I love it, man. They started out inconsistent. You know, it was a lot of jitters. You got that. So all the stars, the rappers, everybody's at this game. They over in Boulder, Colorado. And then in the second half, they just hit the gear. Deion had to talk with them. They just kicked it in second gear. And Shador Sanders was all over the field making plays, athletic ability, making sure that rock was getting out his hand when he felt the pressure. Shador is playing himself. He's a first-round pick already. I'm telling you that right now. Now we're talking about are we approaching top 10 level, top 5 level, top 2 level. Shador Sanders might be in the running for this uh, Heisman Trophy this year, man. Hey, look, you know, big shout-out again to my old-school homie, Rashawn Salam. The Heisman Trophy winner for the Buffaloes back in shouldn't the day. Shouldn't have won that over Kajana Carter. He shouldn't have got that over Kajana. But that's hey, a whole other conversation. Hey, look, Rashawn, Rashawn was a one of one, man. One of one. That being that being said, watching Shador Sanders play quarterback, he seems to be on script even when he is off script. You know what I'm saying? Like, Caleb Williams has got a little bit of that Patrick Mahomes kind of just like pull a rabbit out of a hat for his game. Whereas Shador... He always looks like he knows exactly what the next read of progression is, even when he is playing, you know, out of the pocket, on the run, you know, play breaking down. So, I mean, this is one of the things where I look at his game versus Caleb Williams, and I say to myself, if you're an NFL scout, you want these guys like a Caleb who can kind of just like do it all, make plays out of nothing. But at the same time, in the NFL these days, I think you'd almost prefer a guy like Shadur who is just basically taking what the defense give him and just cerebrally marching the ball down the field with each possession. That's what it looks like to me. He's not doing too much. He's not making the game hard. He let the game come to him. He make his reads. That's the one thing I like about him. He scans the field, and he either he going to move the ball by arm or he going to go on a run. And he's one of the best dual quarterbacks in college football. So he all he needed was a bigger stage. This is the same Shador Sanders.
that was putting up those big numbers at Jackson State University. It's the same player, same talent level. He's just on a bigger stage, and he's showing out. And let me shout out Travis Hunter. We might actually be seeing the Shohei of Ot Shohei Otani of football. Yes, some cornerbacks do play wide receiver, but Travis Hunter will make it a thing. This guy, he don't get tired. He's playing both sides of the field, and he's playing hard. You can't stop him on offense. You don't want to throw to his side on defense. This guy is one of the remarkable talents and remind me of a young Patrick Peterson, a young Charles Woodson, a young Champ Bailey, and I'm going to even throw it out there, a young Dion. I love it. I mean, you got to give this guy his flowers. I mean, it's unbelievable to see what he is doing because at the wide receiver position, a lot of dudes would be more than happy with the stat line that Travis has put up just on the offensive side of the ball against TCU and Nebraska. I mean, these are top flight programs. I mean, the Huskers have been a little down the last they, they, This ain't the Tommy Frazier era. Right. right. Yeah, I mean, look, let's be honest. Right? The Huskers <laughs> aren't that, right? But at the same time, they're not going up against, you know, some like low rung kind of program. They're still Nebraska Corn Huskers. Yeah, yeah. Huskers. This ain't Central Connecticut State. This ain't that. Right. That's what I'm saying. And at, having said that, Travis Hunter is playing within himself, looking like the dude, like you said, never gets tired. He just makes play after play after play. And the signature, like, like know-how as to whether or not a DB is doing his job is if you basically never hear his name called, right? You don't never hear his name called, man. Never. Travis Hunt is one of the best athletes that come into college football in a long time because of what he brings to the table. Not only is he a shutdown cornerback, this man can play slot. He could go on the deep route. He can hit you with some route, like some moves to break you off of the uh 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 off a of scrimmage, get you moving. Come on, this guy's talented, and he don't get tired. The stamina is on ninety nine right now. He don't <laughs> get tired, man. All right. So before we move off of Dion and the Bucks. Let's let's review this whole situation with Matt Rule because Matt Rule, you know, he did some good things at Temple, right? Give, give him his props for that. I thought he was a little bit over his skis in the NFL. I think that it showed that he was. That being said, I think the owner of the Panthers is a little bit of a hothead, doesn't really know what he wants. Asshole. I'm glad he got it there. He's an right. asshole. Man. Doesn't know what he wanted anyways. But Dion is great at, you know, remembering what's good, collecting those receipts, as, as he has said. Uh, you know, you and I were talking about Tim McCarver back in the day when Dion was playing for the Braves, right? Tim McCarver calling Dion out for some bullshit. Dion picking up one of those plastic mailbox carriers full of water. I mean, those things are daggone heavy when you got to throw them. And Dion got velocity on that shit in the locker room. That was because of the the the, the hatred, the disdain. I'm going to make you look bad in front of everybody. So the adrenaline was flowing that day. Dion, Dion had it cocked and loaded. So what exactly was Matt Rule doing? Why was he trying to step to Dion in such a way? I mean, he, he just, look, it, it, it's a rivalry. Remember them old Nebraska-Colorado games? Uh, 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 Lawrence Phillips, Rashawn, uh, what, what's his name? Uh, uh, Rashawn Salam. Uh, these guys were, that was a rivalry at that time. Cordell Stewart, these, this, it was a rivalry at the time. Nobody ain't been talking about Colorado and Nebraska in a long time. So Matt Rule, this is first year in Nebraska. He want to liven it up. He want to turn shit up. He want to talk his shit. And, yo, he going to throw a shot at Deion or two. And Deion was with, I'm with it. We at war. We This is a game of chess. He tried to use the get in your head tactic. It didn't work. They was over there on their side of the field trying to step on the Buffalo. Shador wasn't having it. And the Colorado Buffaloes wasn't having it. So they got on the field with them, and, and they had a standoff. Yo, this was a rivalry game, man. And they tried to make it like the good old days back in the 90s when these teams were always ranked. They faced each other, and they had wars. So Matt, Matt Rule tried to stir the pot up. That's all. It's, all it, it's respect. He didn't get disrespectful. It's a level. You can talk your shit without getting disrespectful. Matt Rule didn't get disrespectful, but – 
he, you know, he he it let it be known. The battle lines is drawn. We coming for you. And, and they did in the first half. But when Dion had that pep talk in the halftime, it was over after that. Once Dion get talking, he start talking that shit, it's over. You're done. That's right. That's right. And and you don't want to give him that edge, right? You don't want to give him that rationale of saying to himself and the guys in the locker room, like, yo, we're supposed to be the ones talking the shit right now because we are the ones getting disrespected. Matt Rule kind of played into Dion's hand in that respect. Yeah, he did, man. He did. He did. That that it, that was a move that, that cost him dearly, but Yo, it, it was good because, like I said, the first half football was physical. These guys were going after it. You know, both sides of the football, you know, and both defenses in the first half were playing outstanding defense. But then, like I said, the talent level, Colorado showed its talent level. All those guys that came in from transfers and recruits, they showed the talent level of the Colorado Buffaloes. Colorado ain't had this type of talent since the 90s, man, so – Look, it, that they they got into they they got they got into their form. They went out. They destroyed them guys. Look, like I said, Shador had what three hundred and ninety yards, and a lot of that came in the second half. So that that just tell you, man. Look, all Dion got to do, all he got to do is talk to you, man. Give you a pep talk, and 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 and, and it's a wrap after that. It's it's curtains. So I, I like him. I like what they bring to the table. I definitely like to see these games when they have to play the Oregon's, the Stanford's, the UCLA, the USC's. That's what I'm looking for. I don't really subscribe to Pac-12 football because those players tend to be bums in the NFL. It's a soft lead. But because Dion up in there, I'm tapping in. Like I said, my mama watching the Colorado Buffaloes. She loves pro sports. She don't watch college sports for shit. And for Dion to get my mama and like a lot of America to tune in, that tell you the star power of Dion, man. It's going to continue, man. And Dion going to upset two of those teams. They're going to lose. But I'm telling you, they might give Oregon a run for their money. They might give Stanford a run for their money as well, man. Hey, look, big shout out to your mom. Big shout out to Dion and the Buffaloes. I'm looking forward to seeing this season for them unfold okay so moving on to the nfl speaking of heismans we got baker mayfield representing the tampa bay buccaneers for the first time today uh -huh. on this note guys like baker guys like whoever you know i mean this could be baker's sunset cruise you know this could be his sunset cruise season yeah, that being yeah. said who do we think are the contenders and who do we think are the pretenders this season in the NFL? Oh, man, you know, look, man, the, the, the real cream of the crop, of course, the Philadelphia Eagles, San Fran, it depends on if Purdy going to be Purdy. Purdy looked good today, too. I got to say, San Fran fans, yeah, he looked good. I mean, it's the Steelers. Steelers, are, they, you know, they got a few pieces. T.J. Watt is the man over there, but he by himself. You know, Minka Fitzpatrick. It's just those guys out there, and then it's the rest of the defense. I mean, y'all beating up on them. Purdy looked good. Um, Seattle, you you got to throw Seattle in there. They're going to be contending. And Detroit, Detroit got a great team. Detroit definitely got a great one of the best offensive lines in football. A. a. Hutchinson is one of the, the best de young defensive ends in football. He looked like a Joey Bosa type of player. Um, that You know, C.J. Gardner. He Johnson, he got those guys turned up. He made a lot of plays. He he, you know, he he and Pacheco head hitting him again. You know what I mean? The, Detroit gonna be around, and their only competition is Minnesota. Maybe Chicago. We gotta see what Chicago gonna be like. I'm not even gonna throw them in there, but I'm saying I I'll say Detroit. I'll throw Detroit in there for the NFC, and then the AFC you got Buffalo, Kansas City, of course. Then you got Buffalo. Then I'll say I'll even throw the Jets in there. I'll throw the Jets in there. I'm a. I want to see what this offensive line could do for Aaron Rodgers. Everything else, they got great talent. It's just the offensive line is the question mark. Um, I'm gonna go say Baltimore is a player. Baltimore is definitely a player in the uh, AFC. You gotta watch out for them. The Bengals as well. And I'm gonna go with the Chargers too. Throw the Chargers in there. They 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 they've been in 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 so many battles and coming up short. I think that 
they might be the team to do what the Cincinnati Bengals did a couple of years ago, going to an AFC championship last year, going to a Super Bowl the year before. You got to watch out. Their talent level is 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 just on is on everybody level when healthy because that was their biggest issue, not being healthy. But they returned J.C. Jackson. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can provide because he went and got that bag after he left New England. He was looked at as one of the premier cornerbacks. So you got him opposite Asante Samuel Jr. You already got two stout cornerbacks, Khalil Mack and the other Bosa who was over here bullshitting with the Philly fans. He was on some bullshit, but they, they got a formidable defense, and, you know, the quarterback is great. Herbert is a monster, so, you know, you got to watch out for the Chargers. They can sneak up and beat anybody when healthy. When healthy, they can beat anybody. When healthy, coming from a native San Diego and former Chargers fan. Yeah, yeah, Los Angeles. Excuse me, I still call them San Diego. You know, you know what I mean? Because, hey, there's no love lost. For that uh, Spanos family moving them up the I five, <laughs> uh, moving them up the I five freeway. But you know, as every Chargers fan knows, there's always some kind of a weird weak link. Whether it is you know some bad special teams kicker missing a vital kick, you know, an injury yeah. situation, or that coach of theirs, Staley. I cannot begin to tell you one good thing that he has done for this franchise, other than just like you said, they got talent on the field but he has made some absolutely crazy knucklehead decisions as a head coach of a professional sports team. They almost had you thinking, man, if they don't get over the hump and they fire his ass, who could you call? You might call a guy out of Colorado. That would be interesting. <laughs> that would be interesting, right? If they wanted to really turn things up, right, and just, and just kind of like set things loose. Because in my opinion – you know, the coach of an NFL team has got to be a little bit like a CEO, right? You got to be able, you got to be able to delegate to your guys, your coordinators in the right way. Now, now our, 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 our favorite man, Bill Belichick may not subscribe to that sort of new school uh, form of thinking with running in an NFL uh, team these days. He may try to still be like the dictator of just all everything lording over every single department of the squad. But that's why, that's why they're going to be losers. You won your six championships, Belichick, but because you're standing in your own way, the franchise will fail. That's right. That's right. And when I look at guys like Dion, right, who has seen the NFL at a high level, the highest level, right, collegiately at the highest level. This guy has even seen youth sports at the highest level. I think Dion understands how to basically get – the best from everybody around him. And that is the thing that I think is always, look, as a former rehabilitating Chargers fan, that is what's always held that franchise back, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I mean, damn. You know, the Chargers had some of the best teams with those LT, Sean Merriman. Sean oh, Merriman. Oh, man. They, 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 there were teams at that time that should have won and they just fell short when you got to play Brady. I'll never forget when they did the LT dance after they beat San Diego at San Diego. That was one of the worst. That was equivalent to what Tampa Bay did to us at the vet. The close the vet, Rondé Barber gets the interception for the touchdown, NFC championship, and close the vet. That was equivalent to what we felt. When they did that dance, was it Merriman dance or was LT? And LT was hot. He was ready to fight somebody that day after that. After the game was over and everybody was shaking hands, he was having none of it. A lot of those teams over that time period, y'all had some great teams over there in San Diego. They just they just fell short, man. Yo, it's like Antonio Gates said for I think it was that particular season, they went 14 and 2. The Dagon uh owners fired Marty Schartenhammer after a 14 and two season, because that's just the kind of dudes that those guys are. And Antonio Gates said that, you know, he went to the pro bowl was checking out, you know, the, everybody on the field for practice or whatever for the pro bowl in, in Hawaii. And he's looking around and there's like 14 other chargers on the field at the same time with him. And he's like, yo, we got our entire roster on this, like all, all uh, uh, pro bowl kind of squad. And we couldn't get that W why? 
because it does still start at the top. So it'll be interesting to see if the Chargers can kind of overcome some of these deficiencies in like leadership or the program writ large. We'll see, but they definitely have the talent to, I think. They got the talent. And and, and, and if it, this is it. This will, what's, what's the coach of the Chargers name again? Brandon Staley. This is his last year. This is the, the leash is up the hair now. <laughs> you don't get it done. You don't get at least to the second round. They're dragging your ass out. This I promise you. The leash, it's a short leash now. You're this is done. True. This you is don't true. get it done this year. You're done. All right. So switching up now to the prediction phase of the program, we got our Philadelphia Eagles taking on the New England Patriots today, you know, debuting some of these draft picks, debuting the Kobe Dean starting at middle linebacker for the first time, I think in the regular season. So give us your prediction for the score, as well as just the general sort of vibe that's going to, we're going to see on the field today. 113, man, it's going to be a, 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 a beating the young Georgia Bulldogs, you're going to hear a lot. Kobe Dean, you're going to hear his name called a lot. You're going to hear Jalen Carter name yelled a lot. He's moving grown men. And when a guy like Lane Johnson, who hasn't given up a sack in over two-plus years, he say this guy is strong and he only 21 years old, he moving that offensive line, the best offensive line, I look forward to him feasting on that offensive line for the Patriots. Matt Jones, you're going to be in for a rude awakening. Here come the pain. It's coming, baby. <laughs> you know what? I'm right there with you because I would not want to be Matt Jones, as they say, for all the whiskey in Ireland today because I think, <laughs> because I think that this dude is going to see his uniform get dirty early and often. I mean, and as you and I were saying – when Mac starts get thrown around a little bit, you start seeing the baby in this dude come out. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. He get riled up. He start losing his composure. You know what I mean? He he mad at the offensive line. Start screaming at the the, the receivers. Look, man, y'all y'all in for a rude awakening. The Eagles are pissed. They lost that Super Bowl on that bullshit ass flag. It's gonna go down. Uh, I, I expect Jalen Hurts to look remarkable. I, I see him throwing for two plus touchdowns today. He's going to even run one in today. I pass for over 250. AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, going to see a bulk of that. Maybe get DeAndre Swift involved too. But man, I like the Eagles 31 13 over the Patriots in a blowout, an ass whooping. It's going to be good. Hey. Lock it in, Mr. West Philly Hippie, known to always make the correct predictions on the program. Andre, as always, thank you so much for tapping in. Thank you for the education. I'll see you again next week. All right, brother. I'll see you next week, man. I'll see you next week.